Hey everybody! Today we're back in the vegetable garden and we are going to do a little harvesting. We do have some peppers that are ready. Not tomatoes yet, but we also have some carrots and potentially some radish. We'll check those. So it'll be a small harvest, but a harvest nonetheless. things I do with the carrots is I kind of dig down to see if they're ready. If I can't see orange pretty high up, they're not ready. They're still growing. And by the way, these are not big carrots. They are petite little finger carrots. So they aren't meant to be big ones. That one I might, might be ready. There you go. See if we've got others. There's another little one. Here's something else to know about carrots. Wherever you grow carrots, it is going to make the soil really nice because they're root vegetables, obviously and they're going to loosen up the soil a lot. Well, I see one there. I really like the flavor of these little ones. And they're great for just munching on, snacking on, or in a salad. Sometimes happens with carrots. <laughs> so, those of you who are used to seeing these big harvests from gardeners who have large gardens, this probably looks like a minuscule amount of of um, food, but it's just my husband and I, so I don't grow for a family of four or six, etc. And this is plenty for us, and this allows us to have a nice salad with carrots, and we can do whatever we want to with this hatch green chili. I'll tell you what we do is because we, we don't have large harvest of the hatch green chilies, we actually will, when we're going to barbecue hamburgers or whatever, we just stick whatever we have picked on the grill to roast it, and then I stick it in the freezer in a, in a Ziploc bag. So we can still enjoy the harvest. We don't have to eat them right away, and it's just a quick, easy way to kind of be efficient with barbecuing use it for whatever you can when you're using it. Just to show you a little bit more of what's going on out here, so the zucchini plant that I'm growing vertically is growing nicely. It's amazing when you start to trim the stems to help it grow vertically, it seems like the plant just takes off. It's like it's putting energy into growing bigger as opposed to more leaves. So that one's coming along, and I have trimmed some more leaves off of it. I also have this second one going over here. It's a little behind, but I've done the same thing, and I'm doing the same thing as far as trimming the leaves off. Then our honey nut squash. 
So you can see, I believe one has gotten pollinated, and we'll have at least one right there. There's another one growing if it gets pollinated once it blooms. And then the second vine is starting to get long enough where it can train itself above or onto the trellis. I've also got romaine lettuce that I have been cutting leaves off from the bottom and then it just continues to grow. These are some more peppers here. They aren't even close to having anything on them. I don't even think we've got blooms yet. Maybe a few. And I was late in planting this, but under this cloche right here, these are eggplants. I was probably too late. We'll see if I get any this year. The other thing to look for here is radish. I forgot about that. We want to see if there's any here to pick. They've gotten really close to each other, so they're not going to be too big. But just to give you an idea of what they look like, these are the French breakfast radish. So they are long and skinny and they're milder than just a regular radish. So I do the same thing I do with carrots. I just kind of go in here and I look to see, kind of dig down a little bit to see if there's any that are big enough to pick. Now this one stems really big, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. You can see, didn't get really big, it's long and skinny, but we can eat that one too. I think that's it for today as far as our vegetable harvest. One other thing I want to show you, a couple of other things I want to show you. So last year, in, it was in the fall, I started some cuttings of my rosemary plant so that I could grow some new ones. I was propagating from cuttings. For various reasons, not all of them survived, but these three did and are doing really well. So just wanted to give you an update. You can see how big they are. And I've had to pot them up over time, but you can propagate rosemary and it's pretty easy. You need to watch them as they're growing and keep them in the right conditions. I could have saved some of the ones that ended up dying, but I'm glad I have three. The other thing that I did last year, did it last summer, was I saved seeds from the euphorbia plant and I grew one and I showed you it, but here is what it looks like now. It's still in a pot and I tend to bring these things out into my garden because I know they'll get watered because I water my garden and it's on irrigation. So on this side, it is actually a sprinkler. You can see the sprinkler head right there. And so um, they will get watered and I won't have to worry about them. So there's an update on those things. And just a quick look at all of my tomatoes and the borage in front of them. Again, no tomato worms yet. And if I do get any, what has happened in the past is if I'm not keeping my garden watered, the borage will die down. That's when I start getting the tomato worms. So I'm keeping that nice and watered. Everything's healthy. No tomato worms as of mid-July. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day. By the way, if you're wondering how to keep your carrots and radishes fresh, if you don't want to eat them right away, this is what I do. I just get a jar, fill it with water, put, put the radishes and carrots in it, make sure the greens are not in the water because they will rot, and I stick that in the fridge. And it, it's good for probably a week. That's how I make sure that I have fresh carrots and radishes to eat, even if I don't want to eat them the day that I pick them.